She-Hulk issue number two. The first issue of this book was pretty interesting. I didn't love it the way other people have. I thought it was just okay. I think the best part of the book was the covers from Jen Bartel because it's just gorgeous to look at. Just absolutely stunning. The other parts of this book, it's cool. I, I, I compared it to something like and just like that, which was that Sex in the City reboot where it's like, hey, you've been through all the crap you've been through before, but now it's like a retelling of your story to bring you back into prominence as a more mature woman. That's what the first issue felt like to me. And then this issue is just a huge departure from that. And tonally, it's different. I, I, I hesitate to say I like this issue because I don't think I did. I think what it was trying to do was reestablish Jack of Hearts into the larger mythos of this world. And because he had like one big connection to Jennifer, we are putting him in this book. So I think there's an agenda being pushed for Jack of Hearts right now. I think, this is just my theory, I think they are looking to get their next big super-powered character back into the zeitgeist. I'd have to imagine this is probably because there is plans at DC to maybe do something with Captain Adam. And if we want to do our own Captain Adam, it could potentially be Jack of Hearts. So... We're going to push this character again, even though he's a boring character with nothing going for him. That's all this issue is. This is hardly a She-Hulk issue. You could do this story with any other character. And that kind of sucks to me, especially when we're trying to reestablish Jennifer back to her status quo. I think that sucks. I did not like this issue. And now that I say it, now that I, say it I did not like this issue. So we open up, we see the, I guess the last time we saw Jack of Hearts when he was like absorbing the radiation inside of She-Hulk, nearly killing her. Now we cut back to the present day. He's in pain. He's collapsed on her floor. She's like, um, should I call someone? He's like, no, I'm good. I'm okay. Just let me lie down for a second. I, I don't drink water, but I'll, I guess I'll take some. Just like, I don't know why I'm alive or any of this. I'm just suddenly thrust into the popular zeitgeist again because i'm going to be relevant in either two to five years depending on when they put me in a movie you get it i'm here to make people remember that i'm a cool character somebody is pushing jack of hearts i don't know who it is it might be dan slot with his weird reckoning war story someone's pushing jack of hearts and it makes no sense to me because the character sucks do you want to know where jack of hearts was for all this time here he was, you know, he was in like his radiation chamber that Tony built him. Tony's like, you're one day going to use all your power and explode. Probably the only good thing you'll ever do is die because you're probably one of those characters that doesn't matter enough to stay relevant. So you do you, boo. You go in the corner and you explode. That's all you're good for. You do that. You're fine. But he's like, I got so sick and tired of just being Tony's little lab rat and I almost killed you. So I said, screw it. I'm going into space. And I found this weird chamber. I got kind of sucked into it. Somebody was controlling me. But they might have been keeping me alive to make me feel better. It's hard to say. I could be a random villain that shows up at any moment from the history or new character altogether. Needless to say, I feel better now. And I need to find Jennifer. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's so it's so easy. Like, there's really nothing of importance to in bringing back Jack of Hearts here. It just sounds like we're bringing the character back because we have to for some reason. Whatever that reason be. Who's to say, really? So, this is where we kind of get, like, the retcon. I guess it's, you could say retcon. It could just be, like, whoever helped him in space helped build his power. But he's more human again. He's he's drinking water. He's so thirsty. He gets hungry. Him and Jen have just, like, a, a scourging set where they just eat a bunch of food. All this random variation of food that Jennifer just happens to be lying around. Look, this is where I'm kind of at a point of contention in this book. It's a weird one to rest on, but I'm going to rest on this hill, Okay. They're making Jennifer have a struggling job. She's trying to get back on her feet, but she has a full chicken, a full thing of pancakes and cake and brownies and tacos. Like, why does she have all this food if, if she's like still getting her life back together? Just, they just seem weird to me because if they're doing like that qu quirky girl bit where she's like coming back to be herself and a woman like that, she does not have all of her food and organized in her fridge like that just... That just something like a single woman in a bachelor apartment. Like, no, she does not have all this food. That is something that bothers me. <laughs> I don't know why that's the thing that bothers me, but it is. 
and he's and we see that Jack's like, I don't know who did anything to me, but I'm gonna find the answers for myself. We're gonna keep me away from the Avengers just so I can get my own solo book eventually. When you know Rainbow decides they're going to write the ongoing Jack of Hearts book, he collapses because he's tired. And he just falls asleep. Jen just leaves him there. She gets ready for a new day of work. She's got a new suit. Headed into work. That's it. And this this is good stuff where she's like walking into the building. She's saying hi to her new neighbors. Hi to the new doorman. She's on, you know, it's like the subway. She sees an ambulance that's stuck in traffic. She picks it up and puts it in front of traffic. Leaves her card on it. That stuff's fun. That's the stuff that should be more of this book. Because it's just a breezy five pages pretty much. And I'm like, yeah, that's it. Just make that the book. You know, her boss is like, hey, you're early and you got coffee. She's like, yes, I did. Look how good I am at my job. I'm super cool, super happy. And then it ends with, I guess, what's going to be the big revelation for this book, which is just who the villain is that let Jack of Hearts out of his cage. And it's somebody connected to She-Hulk because they have been monitoring She-Hulk for a long time. And it's like Jack, 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 Jack of Hearts, Jack of Hearts, stole the tarts, stole the tarts, what happened next April, what April, what happened next. And Okay. If that's somebody, I, I don't know. Is it some fables shit? Are we doing some weird, like, stupid, like, poetry bullshit that I don't care about? This issue is really boring. And I think the problem is it wants you to be compelled by the return of Jack of Hearts when the target audience that is reading this book has no idea who the hell this character is. It does some interesting stuff with She-Hawk. She's got her hair up in a nice little ponytail. It looks really cool. The fact that she has all that food still irritates me, but... I don't dislike it, I just don't think it's good. The artwork is hit and miss. There are certain moments where I like it, certain moments where I'm like, oh, this is not really interesting to read or look at, but overall, I'm just kind of glad that She-Hulk is getting an ongoing because I think the character can hold her own. If this is what people are interested in, that's fine. Personally, it's not working for me. I will give it a couple more issues, but if it doesn't keep my interest, it might be one I drop, but the numbers do good, so... Look, I've read worse. Put it that way, I've read worse. So She-Hulk, issue number two, I'm going to give a five out of 10. Now, thank you guys for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. I will catch you in the next one. Have fun, stay safe, good luck.